Hello darkness, my old friend. And also hello to you, the listener. Welcome to How Do We Human? I'm one of your coasts. Co- I'm one of your coasts. I'm the California coast. Chris really? Binning. That's great. I'm the Gulf of Mexico, Evan Cox. <laughs> Oh, this is the podcast where normally we talk about all of the weird micro moments that are super awkward in life. If we happen to catch the Zodiac Killer in the process, great. But today's a little different. We are taking a topic that we thought was kind of like a joke idea and just running full speed with it. Shit, yeah. (laughs) Taking that missile straight down to crazy town. I think we kind of talked about this. I think it I think we'll just we'll do this every every so many episodes or so. I, I think people might eventually get tired of us just kind of talking about ourselves to each other every episode. So it's it's a little I don't want to use palate cleanser because I know a podcast that uses that already. But it's an amuse bouche. <laughs> from our normal <laughs> yes and that special topic is going to be local lawyers salino and barnes <laughs> they used to work together now they don't we're gonna get way too deep into it shit yeah <laughs> i'm very excited for this episode i know this is a very special episode and as such i gotta start it off with a Ooh. very special question to a very special person uh, evan <gasps> How you doing? Oh my god, my heart lifted when I was the very special person, and when I was asked the very special question, it lifted higher. Oh, all right. And now I feel a bit of, like, vertigo. Uh Uh-oh, careful. I'm back down. I'm doing good. (laughs) Okay, great. (laughs) Listening, editing these podcasts, like, so much of, of the time spent in these podcasts is me saying something and then laughing at myself. Um... That probably gets old. (laughs) As he does it again. (laughs) It's unstoppable. I'm too funny. Um, (laughs) Yeah, I I had a a situation recently, very recently at work that was just... This is... This is peak, Evan. This is peak me at my awkward-y best. And tell me if you know what I'm talking about. I was at work. And coworkers were having a conversation about that show on Netflix that I haven't watched yet. I believe it's called The Haunting of Hill House. Okay, yes, that is a show on Netflix. Great. But Uh one of them referred to it as A House on Haunted Hill. Oh. Which is a Vincent Price movie. Yes, those are different. (laughs) Me, in my head, went, aha, that's different. I can correct you because I uh, because I'm a douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> I just need to. It's not even a thing I think about. It's just like a, an immediate brain response of like, oh, actually, you meant this. I started saying that, and uh, the correct name would not come to me. They're so close and interchangeable <laughs> that I I was ba- I was going to say, oh, you meant the 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 house on haunted hill, but I'm like, wait, no, that's what she said. And then I, everyone was staring at me because I had started talking <laughs> and I couldn't just completely stay silent. I just kind of started going like, don't worry. It's nothing. And they're going like, no, what, what was it? Like, I can't. What did you, what did you say? <laughs> You're talking about a show? Like, yeah, yeah. Like, what did you call it? <laughs> and I said like, oh, it's, it's called, it's the, the, the haunting of Hill House. And she's like, yeah, that's what we were talking about. And then I couldn't remember the name House on Haunted Hill. So I couldn't just say like, oh, sorry. Yeah, you had said House on Haunted Hill. And I was going to say, oh, it was Haunting of Hill House. And just just fell apart in front of everyone. <laughs> and they wouldn't stop staring at me. And I brought that on myself. I should have yeah. kept my mouth shut and <laughs> let them say. <laughs> because it wasn't intentional. It was a slip. I, I slipped it up myself right. trying to correct them. It shouldn't have been called The Haunting of Hill House. That's a very <laughs> confusing title for a show. That mm-hmm. being said, I hear it's very good. I also hear it's very good. I will probably never watch it. Hey, you and me both. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on that note, how you doing? Ooh, great question. I have to say that I have a story that is peak Chris. Hell at yeah. One of my most awkwardness is... Ooh, we're doing it. We're doing it. (laughs) Somebody at work, um, uh, 
needed to borrow a pen. Great. I am someone who generally will always have a pen on them. Interesting. Because I'm prepared. Pockets? Pockets. Pants? Shirts? Uh, usually in the pants pockets. Okay. Um, and so I had a pen, a singular pen. And so I gave it to this person who mm-hmm. asked me for said pen. But sometimes when people borrow pens, what they really mean is, can I have this pen and never give it back to you? <laughs> And that's what happened uh, in this particular moment because he took the pen. I needed him to sign something. And so he took the pen, he signed it, and then he keeps talking to me. He hands the paper back, uh, but not the pen. And the whole rest of the conversation we're having, he's a very animated speaker. So he's talking a lot with his hands, still holding the pen. And each gesture he makes, I mistake it. For him trying to give the pen back to me. So as he keeps talking, I like kind of reach out my arm to meet him halfway for this pen. And I just, it never, every time I do it, he pulls back to keep talking about his story. That's and, so good. Uh, it was, it was quite awkward. I couldn't just be like, hey, can I have my pen back, please? <laughs> Did you ever get your pen back? No. <laughs> I just, felt too awkward to I say it. That. Sometimes you make too many attempts. Yeah. And then, you're like, well, there's no, well, I can't actually do it now. Yeah, this is his pen now. Currently, he might still be thinking, like, hey, maybe that's just a weird arm thing Chris is doing. I know, he might. <laughs> but the second you admit that you yeah. want a pen, he's like, oh, that's what he was doing? Weird. Yeah. <laughs> For a pen, Chris, really? For a pen. It is weird. Some people just don't, th- I mean, granted, some, here's the thing pens like a bic just like a plain old bic yeah sure that's a cheap pen sure Throw them around they come in packs of 30 but most pens especially pens that'll float around workplaces mm-hmm. they're like three dollars a pen sure that's not nothing right i want my pen i and want i want i want it now <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of commercials, mm. let's uh, go ahead and just dive right into this main topic. Let's Binnings let's... and Cox, <laughs> injury podcasters. <laughs> uh, 2888. Call now. Um, <clears throat> Salino and Barnes, uh, we're just going to get into I don't even fully remember how they came up in our last episode. Probably just I was singing it. I think it was the jingle that brought us there, but uh, who knows how that jingle came up. Um, but uh, it, it was, as we discussed in our last episode, they used to work together. Yes. They had a dramatic falling out that I was previously unaware of. I had fun telling you it yes. existed. And as such, we decided to go fully in, fully immerse ourselves in the <laughs> Salino and Barnes mythology. Ross, Salino, and Stephen Barnes. That's right. Mm. They have first names. <laughs> Who knew? You never know. Sometimes you uh, never know. Sometimes companies like that is like, oh, these are just two people with last names. Mm-hmm. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Did you have as much fun as I'd hoped you would have living through this reading about them? Uh, I did have, I had a lot of fun because there's a lot of articles about it. There are. It's a surprising amount of articles. Um, With some conflicting accounts. Yes, absolutely. We will get to. Yeah, and not a lot of updated information past like 2017. 2017, 2018... 2018 was the most recent stuff I could find. Yeah. So maybe I can fill in a, a gap okay. you didn't see. <laughs> yes. I mean, we're going to run down the full the full history of this thing. Before we get fully into Salino and Barnes, I have a question for you. Great. Commercials like this. This mm-hmm. is an earworm. This is it, yes. it digs into your head. Uh, every article that I read about Salino and Barnes mentioned that this yes. song was a quote unquote earworm (laughs) which is why i repeat it i even watched a video with the guy who wrote it who seemed like a very very nice old man who was just thrilled great that people like it if that's what people do (laughs) (laughs) but people remember it in if you were looking you're injured okay okay i okay you're looking for a lawyer yes is your first reach for the jingle number that you remember 
Or do you take the time to go like, well, that can't be the best option? <laughs> oh, that's a good question. And Google it. Because now we have phones. Earworms right. aren't as important necessarily. I'm looking it up on my phone. I can just go injury attorney, good, Yelp. <laughs> yeah. <That's> a, <laughs> and get a phone number. That's a good question. I feel like I would take the time to just Google quickly on my phone, good injury attorney. <laughs> Yelp. <laughs> Yelp. Um, yeah, I don't think that I would go necessarily with the jingle. I, if they came up first on hey, on Google, yeah. then sure. Then I'd I'd probably remember it then and be like, oh, right, they're the ones with this catchy jingle. Yeah. But I don't think that in the heat of the moment after I've been injured, I, I don't think that I would... <laughs> How were you injured? <laughs> <laughs> um... But yeah, I don't think that I would necessarily remember the jingle. I feel like I would remember the jingle and choose not to call. <laughs> oh, interesting. I think they would fall down my list. I feel like I wouldn't... The only time I would remember the jingle is either as I'm hearing it again at some point on the radio or right before I fall asleep. I That's... feel like those are the times that I think about jingles. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh that's one of those one of those numbers there are a few commercial numbers that generally will stick in my head but that's that's one i'll definitely i always remember and what is interesting to me about it because <clears throat> we were talking in the last episode of like yeah i don't know if i remembered seeing this uh in washington hey where I, uh, seattle <laughs> when i was working in the walgreens <laughs> take a shot <laughs> i wish <laughs> <laughs> um well the, uh, shit i i got drifted off into an alcohol uh <laughs> slumber um, you didn't oh, remember yeah. <clears throat> I, so yeah i didn't remember whether or not like oh was that a commercial i don't think i had seen it before moving to california it it is mostly a New York commercial. Yeah. They're from Buffalo. It just came over to California a couple of years ago, and that is the chief point of their arguing and yeah, it, need to separate. Yeah, several several factors that we'll get into, but that's definitely one of them. Um, and the their jingle, I guess, you know, became very memeable so they may have some sort of recognition across the whole country but their offices yeah are new york and uh and california fascinating to me so let's let's just get right into it let's get right into it off the reading just one article <clears throat> mm-hmm. and, and i'm not saying that's all i did <laughs> i read more i read like three or four uh but reading that first article really the first like three articles ross salino came off as the bad guy yes that is also what i came across as well part of it though i wonder because a lot of the him coming off as the bad guy is barnes is just much more out in the press like giving yes. information so i don't know if barnes is secretly the bad guy who's like just trying to put all the pieces in play to curry favor i've got i've got some info on that okay but i'm gonna i'm gonna hang on to it for a second because first we need to we need to play (laughs) i'd written the note here (laughs) ross salino seems like an unhinged maniac (laughs) um and pulled this quote from an article uh, oh, I it, hope it's it, the same quote that I've pulled. It said, last year, Salino allegedly threatened, I don't give a fuck. I will burn the place to the ground and start over with one lawyer. That is a <laughs> quote that is in my notes. <laughs> I'm like, man, even like I had known about this before, but reading through it all again, it was a delight to be like, oh, no, yeah, this isn't just like a public feud. Like, they fucking hate each other. Oh, yeah. And are just cursing each other out in public constantly. Or it's at least they were a tragic love ago. story. <laughs> um, and and certain, certain parts of that will certainly, um, certainly come into play. Um, so they have their catchy jingle that they're known for, the... Uh, for anyone unfamiliar, it's uh, we kind of sang it at the beginning, but uh, <laughs> I'm gonna do it again <coughs> together. Uh, yeah, I don't see why not. 
Salino and Barnes, injury attorneys, 1,888. <laughs> Is it 1,000? I, I, I think it's, it's... I thought it was uh, 800 888 800 888 because I thought it was it was uh, wait, I thought it was 1 888 I don't know like I might be confusing it with number. like the Empire oh actually I did I wrote it down oh great you're right it is 800 Woo! pardon me don't wait call 8 800 888 888 not 1000 but you can forgive me for uh, uh oh, god it's just such a good a good bit but i kind of don't want to jump ahead I, i'm i'm <laughs> i'm teasing stuff i know I'll, I'll i'll tease it this way are you familiar with the newer more recent jingle i'm not familiar with the more recent jingle i've seen the newer <laughs> phone number if if what we're talking about is the barnes firm the barnes firm yes so so basically like we can just get to that and then we double back of this course. is going to be all over the it's place it's going to be a mess <clears throat> the fact that this episode is existing is stupid enough that i don't really feel the need to stick to structure <laughs> you know this this breakup they went through was so messy so all over the place so that's what this episode is gonna be it's symbolic symbolic art Uh, yes i think no question this episode is pure art yes that's the word for it yeah instead of palate cleanser (laughs) we're gonna do some (laughs) we're gonna do some art episodes yes some masterpieces i love that this is uh this is a how do we how do we i forgot the name of our fucking podcast i called us coasts earlier so (laughs) and quite frankly i have not forgotten about it it will weigh Uh, on my mind the rest of the episode (laughs) so the uh as a part of not the entire part, but really the the straw that broke the camel's back of this whole lawsuit. So they're they're suing and counter suing each other. Yes, over this company, uh, Ross Salino wants out entirely. Uh, Stephen Barnes wants them to. Yes, because here's the thing. In spite of all of this, all of this bad press, they're having bad. That's one of my notes from the the twenty eighth uh, twenty eighteen. In spite of all this insane bickering and swearing at each other in public and suing each other in starting in 2017, record-breaking profits in 2018. Oh, yeah. They are loaded, both of them. So Stephen Barnes is saying, like, hey, man. Hey, come on. <laughs> the Barnes firm doesn't have the same ring to it. <laughs> uh, but it does have an amazing jingle. <laughs> <laughs> what is the new jingle? Please break it down. Now, I don't remember... I, I can't remember if the front half of it is the same uh, cadence as Salino and Barnes, so I'll just sing it as if it were. This okay. might be wrong, but the number is the same. The Because <laughs> there's not enough syllables. The Barnes firm. <laughs> right. Uh, the Barnes... I think it just goes, the Barnes firm. 1-800-8 million. <laughs> oh, you know what? I have heard that. And the first time I heard that, I died laughing <laughs> because I loved the original commercial and the phone number so much that to just be blindsided when it stopped at yeah. like eight, like, what's coming next? What's coming next? Million. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't like, even... did, did Dr. Evil write this phone number? <laughs> eight million. Call one eight million. <laughs> They should get in with that. That'd be a good commercial. Drop. Yes. Stop trying to be Selena and Barnes. Evil and Barnes. Ooh. <laughs> Mike Myers, get on it. Not the not the scary stabby guy. The not comedy the scary, guy. No. The scary stabby guy is not someone I'd want as my injury attorney. <laughs> <laughs> Valid point. But I do want the voice of Shrek. He <laughs> uh, was the voice of Shrek. Way to go, Mike Myers. <laughs> doing good but commercial yeah. <laughs> commercial jingles are such an art form because it seems like so many of them are so lazy yes it's, it feels like a lot of commercial jingles the jingle writer has been given 20 minutes and a gun has been put to their head and it's yeah. like come up with a jingle it's yeah like they're by their nature, they have to be so... It's the same as like writing kids' songs. Yeah. <clears throat> they have to be so simple. That mm-hmm. it, that's a, a funny thing about... I mean, I say this a lot, but like the older you get, the more you realize like 
Uh, everybody's stupid. We're all we're all yes. just fucking around trying to figure it out. We're doing our best, but we all suck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we're, this is a specific message to you, whoever wrote the Liberty Mutual jingle. <laughs> But the same liberty, way, liberty, liberty, ooh. liberty. That last liberty kills me. That does not need to be there. That entire jingle can be liberty, liberty, liberty. End of commercial. Liberty. That feels like an accident. They took a breath. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so the same way you would write a song for a kid, so that the kid doesn't get confused because you're yeah. using like prog rock chord changes. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think kids should be exposed to at kids a young age should the same be way expo- people expose the, their kids to French. Yes, in the womb. Expose your kids to early Genesis. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so in doing a commercial, you have to keep it simple because a lot of people are simple. simple. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Myself included. Although I love prog rock, and that is a sign of a smart person. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, so it, it's hard to simultaneously have to write a song that is that simple and yet doesn't sound exactly like all the other jingles out there. Yeah. It has to sound different. If it sounds the same, like, there's just like a subconscious reaction. You just go like, oh, what are they doing? It's the same reaction I had when I'm like, oh, why is the, the Verizon guy over at Sprint now? Like, fuck this sure, guy. Yeah. He's, he's not loyal. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't use either of those companies anymore. Mm-hmm. AT&T. There you go. I think I've disclosed that on this podcast before. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's well, a first time for everything. That, uh, I guess we full circled. Shut down the podcast. <laughs> Shut it down. <laughs> um, I'd like to uh, take us way back here Ooh, to back. the... Um, the beginnings of the Salino and Barnes firm. Um, Founded by Ross Salino Sr. Sr., yes. Founded in 1958. Look at that guy go. Look at him go. Now, well, don't want to get too somber, but did see he passed away very he recently. Did, like two or three months ago. Yeah, depending on when this episode comes out. <laughs> um, so on a serious note, yeah. we are not joking about Ross Salino no. Se- Sr. R.I.P. By all accounts, seemed like a great guy. Yeah, so, yeah, definitely. <laughs> left, By left all accounts, seems like a super like nice, genuine person. That is kind of sad to think about that he, he kind of passed away in the midst of his son and his son's business partner suing each other over right. the company he started. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it started in 58 as Salino and uh, Lacutus, Lacitus. I'm not Injury sure. Injury attorney. <laughs> <laughs> Salino and Lacitus. Um, <laughs> then, then it became Salino, Bernstein, and Dwyer. Mm. And then... Salino, Bernstein, and Dwyer. Your e- premium could be higher, but not with <laughs> us. <laughs> Call us at 1-800-888-888-888. I got the number wrong again. 800-888-888-888. Someone's showering. <laughs> yeah, uh, but they're doing it in a way where they just turn the faucet on, turn it off, turn it back on. Weird. Um, <clears throat> and then it's uh, 1991, Ross Salino Sr. retires. Mm. And I don't think that's when uh, Ross Salino Jr. and Stephen Barnes, that's when they, it said that's when they joined the firm. So I don't think they became partners at that time, but they both joined in the early 90s um, to create the powerhouse of Salino and Barnes. And became skateboarders with Jonah Hill in the mid 90s. (laughs) That's correct. (laughs) I thought so. That's uh, not very many people saw that movie, but Jonah Hill's directorial debut mid '90s is solely about New York. At that time, just New York lawyers, Buffalo attorneys. Yeah, Buffalo attorneys, Salino and Barnes, and they can't seem to balance their um, their law careers, very promising law careers, mm. and just the need to shred it in the skate park. Shit, yeah. <laughs> I want to, you know, provide context for anyone who's not familiar with Salino and Barnes. Yeah. Pick any tacky local um, attorney team that you see those horribly green screened commercials for. That's Salino and Barnes. Yeah. 
little a little better call Saul in the commercial sense, yeah, not yeah, necessarily yeah. in the crime, although there's although some, some crime. But uh, yeah, I've got an addendum to that too. Yes, I, I learned a lot last night. <laughs> I at learned like one in the morning, <laughs> so much three hours before we started recording. <laughs> um, so I'll I'll start there because that's a that's a nice little segue. Unless you you had uh, more uh, background to share, I don't. I don't. Are toes. we jumping to two thousand and five? I don't have many dates. Um, what is two thousand five? <laughs> Is that when they started together? Uh, no, that's when um, some sort of crime happened where yes. Salino uh, was suspended from practicing law for six months. So that... And Barnes was censured, whatever that means. <laughs> Something in court. Yeah. I don't quite know. Um, so, yeah, that was a part of what made me write Salino seems like an unhinged maniac. <laughs> was back-to-back... In that article, we probably read the same article. I think it was the uh, New York Times. Yeah. Um, where Salino threatened, I don't give a fuck. I will burn the place to the ground and start over with one lawyer. And then mentioned that he was barred for malpractice mm-hmm. at a certain point. And I'm just like, what is going? Like, Stephen <laughs> Barnes is just, <clears throat> Stephen Barnes is just trying to, you know, run this law firm like a, you know, up and up guy. And Ross Salino, like, what the hell? What is he up to? That is not the case, though. At least there is evidence towards the contrary. Oh? <clears throat> yes. <laughs> can we talk about how Salino and Barnes look? Because I we can talk about how in that article they used the worst picture of Ross Salino. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, neither of them have very many good photos, I would say. That's fair. Um... Uh, Ross Salino has like gray hair and he's got glasses um, and he kind of looks like his face is a little melted. Well, oh. and then um, and then Stephen Barnes looks like um, the bad guy in every 90s action movie, <laughs> which is part of why I don't know if I can believe that Stephen Barnes <clears throat> is, in fact, not the bad guy here is strictly by judging a book by its cover. He looks like he's up to no good. So whatever it wasn't the New York Times one, but whichever article this was just has this picture of Rosalina that's like, why would you use that picture? <laughs> <laughs> and I think you're on this. I think Stephen Barnes is pulling some strings to yeah. make Rosalina look like the crazy one. Yes. Um. So I well, let's let's take it back. Let's keep taking it back. Let's keep taking it back. So basically, going back to. Uh, the fact that Ross Salino and Stephen Barnes worked at Ross's father's law firm. Yes. In the first place, that there's a, a, a word for that kind of process. It's nepotism. Nepotism, which is f- yes. Father's hiring his son at his company. Yes. Um, but, you know, if they're qualified, whatever, that's great. Stephen Barnes, his brother and his girlfriend yes. were both hired at this law firm. Correct. And then Ross Salino tried to get his daughter hired, yes. who had just graduated college, college and was... Yeah, honor student. Honor student lauded. And Stephen Barnes said, fuck no. <laughs> yeah, he was like, absolutely not. For reasons cited as nepotism. <laughs> yeah, I I felt like that was uh, that was pretty ironic that somebody who uh, presumably got his brother and girlfriend hired there that uh, I think he just wanted to put an end to the the Salino regime since it started from his father. <laughs> Ooh, that's an interesting thought. That's my theory. Hmm. <clears throat> So, yeah, that is kind of the, as far as I could find, that is the, like, egg of this yeah. anger and hatred between each other. Is yes. Stephen Barnes saying absolutely not to hiring Ross Salino's daughter. I think that that was, like, kind of the last straw, um, because I think, I, I don't have the date for when uh, Salino tried to get his daughter hired, but I think it was, like, 2015-ish. Um, because on May, uh, of 
2017 is when Salino officially sues Barnes and says, well, you know, we're done here. Um, it's Salino uh, said that he was, quote, deadlocked with uh, his partner over everything from uh, succession planning to who had settlement authority, as well as disagreements over marketing and advertising decisions, as well as uh, poaching clients from other firms and hiring practices. Now we're getting somewhere. Yeah. So this <clears throat> was the big bomb that I saw that was like, now wait a fucking second. Because I found a whole nother interview just talking to Ross Salino. And of course, he could still be a monster. <laughs> of course he could. <laughs> we don't know anything about these people. We just read articles other people wrote about them based on what those people said about themselves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, to be clear, we did not reach out to Ross Salino <sighs> or Stephen Barnes. We should have. We should have called 1-8-million. one 8 million one 800 8 million Um <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, the the that that's what's interesting to me is the the general information that comes out when you just look at the surface is the the <clears throat> nepotism argument, uh, pissed off Ross Salino, yeah, and then the uh, Stephen Barnes wanting to expand to California was yes. like the straw that broke the camel's back. The final like we disagree on this. Ross Salino wants nothing to do with firms in California. Which is why, and I didn't realize that when the commercials, uh, the Barnes Firm commercials started up, I thought like, oh, weird, they split up, and now this is Stephen Barnes. What is Ross Salino doing? Uh, Salino and Barnes is still exists in New York, but all of the branches in California and all the advertising is now called the Barnes Firm because Ross Salino wanted nothing to do with it. Right. So, okay. So in New York, it's still Salino still and Barnes. Still Salino and Barnes. And that is what Stephen Barnes is fighting for, is Got keeping it. that name and the jingle. But yeah, so when you begin to dig a little bit deeper, Ross Salino says that, yeah, Stephen Barnes is just an angry monster and he poaches clients from people in a very aggressive way. And he says, like, hey, I don't I don't want anything to do with it. His exact quote, I need to stop locking my phone. Um, Salino says, feud began because company was poaching clients from other law firms and he couldn't stomach it anymore. Oh, and that kind of um, verbiage goes into um, what uh, happened a month after Salino sues Barnes because Barnes gets out there. He requests a restraining order against Salino um, because he finds out that Salino is allegedly poaching lawyers and cases from their shared firm. <laughs> but the tough thing with all of this is remembering these are two very famous lawyers. And yeah. you know what they're really good at? Spinning stories. Yes. A part of me, and stop me, maybe I already said this in this podcast, but a part of me genuinely thinks this is all a play to get more attention because oh. they realized exactly what I said at the top. Hey, the jingle's not as important anymore with social media and shit like that. Other uh, attorneys can reach out to people in different ways that we're not doing. Hey, what if we do what nobody else is doing and have a very, very loud and public feud? Oh, interesting. Mm. Um... So like when when celebrities get together and then they break yes. up, but it means nothing. Okay, that's okay. That's an interesting. Uh, it's a theory I'm tossing out. Yeah, there. it's an interesting theory. I also have um, something that Barnes put out into the uh, into the world was that Salino um, said that the Salino name was more valuable than the Barnes name, Ooh. equating <clears throat> Salino and Barnes to Harley Davidson, saying no one ever calls their motorcycle a Davidson. <laughs> I'm going to side with him there. I think Salino is the more important name. It's I I think that I would probably agree with you. I think Barnes is more of a common name. It's more it's common. Also multiple buildings where right. animals live. Oh, that's a great point. So what's that? A Barnes firm? What? You got a bunch of uh, chickens and horses in there? <clears throat> what are you going to do with those chickens and horses, Steven. 
Oh, I also found a lot of um, other people in the the uh, law community. They also have some great Ooh. quotes to pull from I for this story. Did not fall into this. Uh, one, a lot of them chose to remain anonymous, but uh, someone said it's going to be like a div- like when they first uh, had these lawsuits going. Uh, someone was like, "This is gonna be like a na- like a divorce, like a really nasty <laughs> divorce." Um, somebody else was like, "This is the biggest legal story of the decade in the Buffalo legal community." Okay, well that started Which, off yeah, big. And- <laughs> started off big, and we really worked ourselves <laughs> really into a niche down. audience. <laughs> um, but then one other guy, w- or woman, I don't know, they remained anonymous, mm-hmm. but they said, "If I was making the money that these guys make." I could stay partners with the devil. Interesting. Could you stay partners with the devil? Could I stay partners with the devil? I... Surprise. I'm the devil. <laughs> oh, well, we're getting along quite well. Well, so that reflects on you it, poorly. It, it does. <laughs> and that's why I think I could get along with the devil. <laughs> uh, what about you? Could you be partners with Satan himself? Satan himself. I don't, you know, do we, do any of us know what Satan's like? <laughs> yeah, that's a great point. Do any of us know what Satan is really like? Mm. Or is it just God and the angels kind of spinning their story? Ooh, yeah, they're the, they're the barns in this equation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> so speaking of the amount of money, though, that they were making, mm-hmm. is it, I found out that in the... Um, is in August 2017. So they, for the first lawsuit comes in May 2017. So May, June, July, August. That four month span, Salino and Barnes each made two million dollars. Jesus. Yeah, and uh, they they raked in uh, total in 2015 and 2016, um, almost 21 million dollars. Can you imagine? Like, but at what level? I mean, I don't know. Life changes when you make a lot of money. I'm sure you get a, sure. a house that costs a lot more money and everything mo costs money, more. Mo money, mo problems. Mo problems. Um, Curly and Larry problems aside. <laughs> <laughs> That's almost oh. a joke. Oh. I don't know. That um, is so properly stupid for this episode. <laughs> But like at what point at what point does that just feel insane? Like I get you want to keep providing for your family, you want to keep providing a lifestyle, but what fucking lifestyle are you living? Yeah. Where 20 some million dollars in in what a year? <laughs> um how? in 2 years, I guess. In 2 years. So 10 roughly, roughly 10.5 10. million a dollars yeah. a year. Is that not enough to just stop? Yeah. Or really, like, separate? Like, Stephen Barnes wants to keep them together because it's worth so much more money, and the Barnes firm worth less. But, like, how much more money do you need to make? <laughs> it's a good question. Is it that, is it worth the, like, that's a genuine, like, even if they're not actively going, like, hey, let's, uh, let's just fight in public, let's fake it. If it is, I'm sure it's a real fight. Yeah. But I guarantee they're both spinning this themselves even even if they fucking hate each other they both know they're benefiting from this they both know Uh they're making money they they orchestrated the fact that they made that much money in 2018 yeah i firmly believe that okay okay um uh the same time that uh barnes throws out the uh the salino quote of you know i don't give a fuck i'll burn this place to the ground (laughs) um (laughs) That same month, um, uh, someone sends a suspicious package wow. to the Salino and Barnes office in Buffalo that's a full of white powder. That's bad stuff. It's bad stuff. Uh, it, I couldn't find what the powder mm. was, but p- uh, police like tested it and cleared it as non-threatening or non-dangerous. But Crystal light, maybe. Cr- maybe. <laughs> we don't know. Um... 
But yeah, right. And then it was like a couple weeks after that is when Barnes was like, hey, you'll never believe what Salino said. <laughs> he said he'd burn this place to the ground. There's more to this. Yeah. There's more to this story than we found in those two or three articles we read. <laughs> Some things. Yeah. I think if we read all the articles, there's still there's something going on here. The more that I think about it, where like Barnes keeps getting himself out there and he's like, you guys, guess what Salino said? Yeah. I we we're gonna keep up on this. This is not yes. the last. <laughs> this is not the last you've heard of Selena. Whether and you've Barnes. been enjoying listening to this or not, this is not <laughs> the last time we do this. <laughs> <laughs> when do you think we, if ever, mm-hmm. will get a resolution to this story? Because right as of right now, yes, they both operate separately, separate coasts. Selino. Uh, this primarily stays in New York. Barnes primarily stays in California. Mm. When do you think we'll get some sort of true resolution to this? I think by this time next year, we will have the Ryan Murphy American Crime Story <laughs> version <laughs> of these events because it will have... Uh, elevated and exploded by then and we'll we'll know all the facts this time next year okay because it's been quiet for too long it has because we like we couldn't find anything i couldn't find anything past uh like very early 2018 like january or february 2018 the realistic what happened is that they did settle and stephen barnes won and selino's just still a part of the company and they don't talk anymore and in that case we never will hear okay anything. <laughs> the last thing that i could find from barnes because selino's stayed pretty quiet and pretty out of the out of the the press yeah but barnes you know again trying to like you know pull his strings or whatever make sure he looks like the good guy uh said uh you know ross has been my friend for over 25 years I know we could still work together for the benefit of our clients. Mm. We've built something amazing together. It would be wrong to break that up. Hmm. I mean, they're each playing a part. They're playing good cop, bad cop, really. (laughs) (laughs) Who's being arrested? (laughs) Us? Us. The fans. I guess that's what we are at this point. I'm a, I've been a fan for a minute. Yeah, I love this franchise. <laughs> I'm going to move us along into a game I orchestrated. <laughs> at, oh, I'm, I'm excited. I didn't know we were going to play a game. Called. <laughs> remember when I was talking about me laughing at myself? I do remember. This tickles me to no end. We're going to play a little game called Selino and Barnes or... <laughs> Salino and Barnes or Marino and Karn? Uh, <laughs> That's Dan Marino and Richard Karn. <laughs> oh, great. Richard Those Karn two of Home very Improvement. Very similar people. And uh, Family Feud. Dan Marino, yes, former course. Dolphins quarterback. <laughs> yeah. So, Naturally, those two, when I think of people that like are paired, like famous duos, mm-hmm. I'm thinking Dan Marino and Richard Karn. Uh, yeah, it's like it's an odd couple scenario. Um,. Before we get too off topic, mm. um, let me take us more off topic. <laughs> uh, who's your favorite Family Feud host? Ooh, what a good question. Ah, family. Let's see. Who, who's all hosted? Uh, so you got, uh, Richard, got Richard Karn. Da- Richard Karn. Steve Richard Harvey's Dawson, going Dawson. Richard Dawson. Steve pretty Harvey. Before me. John, uh, John O'Hurley. John O'Hurley. Uh, Louis Anderson. Louis Anderson's a good time. Uh, those are the five I can, I can think of. The, the, yeah, Louis Anderson's kind of the, the classic to me, but I love Richard Karn. Yeah. <laughs> I think Richard Karn was great. Just like, what a, what a nice guy. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I like, I think Family Feud, like currently, you know, Steve Harvey's doing his thing and it's yeah. very like, these fucking idiots, what kind of answer was that? Sort of looks right. at the camera. And like, Richard Karn could get flustered like that, but it always seemed like, like Family Feud, Feud just feels like, well, it's, it's a very nice game. Okay. It, it's funny in its own concept. Uh, I think Richard Karn let the game be the game. 
Okay, okay. You? I am uh, partial to John O'Hurley. John O'Hurley. Um, I gotta look up John O'Hurley. He was uh, Elaine's boss, uh, Jay Peterman on Seinfeld. Oh, I saw him in... Um, I don't, why do I do not remember him hosting Family Feud? How long did he do that? I don't know. Let me see. I saw him in a uh, performance of Chicago in Seattle, Washington. <laughs> Chicago down, in Seattle? Chicago in Seattle, down the street from the Walgreens at the Paramount Theater. Um, yeah, he played the uh, Richard Gere part and was oh. awesome. He was great in it. That was Interesting. Really fun. I don't go see a lot of musicals, but uh, that was a good time. Huh. Um, let's see. He... I would not have expected him to play that part. So he retired in 2010. I think that might have just been a long gap of time. Uh, like, not that I watch it currently, I will throw it out there like that is maybe my favorite game show. <laughs> I think yeah, I think uh it's it might be mine too. I I'm a big game show fan. Uh we could spend a lot of time getting into game shows right now, but uh I know it's that's a it's that's not a, something we want to do right now. Wonderful next amuse bouche. We <laughs> okay, can just talk great. game shows. Absolutely. Um I will just throw out there, like, I can't get enough. Are you familiar with the clip of the, the the English version? And there's the guy who answers turkey for all of the... What, what, what do you call the round at the end? That's like the fast round where you just get a certain amount of time and you have to oh, name uh, things by yourself. Fast money? Fast money, maybe. It's that. And he, if have you not seen this? I've not seen this. <laughs> I'll show it to you after we're done. It's my favorite <laughs> thing in the world. It's just this guy, like, he just, he answers turkey correctly once. And then one, just like, it just blurts out of his mouth. And then the rest of the answers, like, turkey just kind of works. He's just, like, so delighted with himself. And he's laughing at himself. And he just keeps saying, turkey, turkey. <laughs> it's my favorite, uh, favorite internet clip. From game show history, easily. Um, <laughs> anyway, speaking of games, yes, we gotta let's get, back get into to the this. game. So I'm gonna give you a, uh, a description of a pair of people, and you have to tell me whether this is Selena <laughs> and Barnes or Marino and Carr. <laughs> okay, I don't want to show my cards too early, but I feel pretty good about how I'm gonna be at guessing. But now that all I've right. said it, I'm gonna get it all wrong. All right, are you ready? I am ready. Question number... Question? I don't know if this is a question. <laughs> Statement number one. <laughs> <laughs> Statement number one. This pair are both avid golfers. Ooh, that's a good Darn one. Off tough. That is a tough one. I feel like Richard Karn is for sure a golfer. So I'm going to say Marino and Carnes. Ding, ding, ding. Correct. All right. Richard Karn hosts his own... Uh, he hosts a charity golfing tournament. Okay, okay. And I'm told by the internet Dan Marino is an insanely good, like, trick shot golfer. Oh. Which I didn't watch any videos yet, but I'm going to dig into that after we're done here. Yeah. Uh, Ross Salino also uh, runs his own golf t- tournament and owns a uh, uh, golf club. <laughs> Is that what they're called? Country club? <laughs> country club? Yeah, I think it's, I think he owns he owns a country club. Uh, could not find any information as to Stephen Barnes being a golfer. So I that see. was a ooh tough. That was, that was important tough. to listen both because <laughs> I know you were saying to yourself, "Well, Ross Salino clearly Ross Salino." If I we ever, all know <laughs> if I've ever seen a golfer, it's Ross Salino. <laughs> Do you golf? Uh, no, I um don't mind miniature golf mm, love miniature golf um but regular golf full-size golf um <laughs> is not something that i um am am good at hey neither am i but i do it once every other year my grandparents live um like next to or kind of they're backed up against a golf course Ooh. um and because they are very avid golfers <clears throat> And That's so cool. every time I visit, I think they're kind of like, well, you know, we could we could go golfing, we could go to the driving range. <laughs> Just waiting for you to say yes. Yeah. Mm, that's all right. You ever done a driving range? I've done a driving range. Yeah, that's a good time. Yeah, I get frustrated. I get it. I'm like, I want to drive much further down the range. You know, the 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 secret is don't try to hit it so hard. Okay. Just keep that eye on the ball. Keep your shoulders square. Keep your feet planted and just just 
focus on hitting it. Uh, that, that's the thing. If you swing really fucking hard at it, but you hit it wrong, it's you're missing or it's going nowhere. But if you hit it perfectly right, like slowly, it'll shoot out there. Not like crazy amounts like pro golfing, but right. like it'll impress you. Okay. <laughs> it'll go straight and go farther than you would expect. Interesting. We'll go golfing sometime. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, okay. So we're gonna try stand up at some point. We we're gonna are. go golfing together. Uh, more amuse bouche episodes. We, we're lining them up. We're lining them up. We're doing so that it. we can knock them down. Question number two. Bring it. These two are lawyers. Have a law firm together. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, it's a tough one. <laughs> um, you know, against my better judgment, I'm gonna say Salino and Barnes. Boom. You've done it. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. That's two for two so far. Great. Out of six. So Out of don't six. Get, All right. Okay. Too, don't get too cocky. Don't okay. Get too cocky. This next one, I, I I thought for a second I tipped my hand a little bit, but realized I probably wasn't listening. No. Um, this pair. Statement number three. This pair both run charitable foundations. Ooh. Now I've told you that Richard Carn has a charitable foundation. Yes. And Ross Salino has yes. a charitable foundation. Yes, you have. Which team has both? Yeah, that's a... Is it Barnes or yeah, Marino? It really comes down to Stephen Marino Barnes. Marino and Barnes. <laughs> <laughs> Marino oh, and great. Barnes. Marino and Barnes. Quarterback and lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be great. They need to... You know, we've found <laughs> the people <laughs> that they should be paired up with now. I think I prefer Salino and Karn. <laughs> Salino and Karn. That'd be lovely. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take. I, I feel like Dan Marino is more charitable than Stephen Barnes, so I'm gonna say Marino and Karns. You're killing it. Yeah. So good. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, Dan Marino. I believe all is also runs a charity golf tournament. <laughs> Um, also when I ever, I've watched who wants to be a millionaire mm -hmm. and the contestants talk their way through their reasoning and their answers. I'm like, shut up and just answer <laughs> it. But now that I'm in a game show hot seat, I, I truly empathize. Statement number four. Yes. Bring it. These two have names that rhyme with Marino and Karn. Oh, what the hell? What? <laughs> Okay, these two <laughs> have names that rhyme with Salino and Karn. No, with Marino and Karn. With Karn. Marino and Karn, sorry. <laughs> sorry, we got... I saw where you got thrown off. I got all, all <laughs> sidetracked. The uh, weed whacking out the window. <laughs> it's, yeah. Hon honestly, I hired him. It's to keep you on your toes, because some of these questions are easier than others, but you're getting rattled and you're sweating. Yeah, let me it's tell you. It's here. Let me tell you. <laughs> It's working. <laughs> um, okay, that rhyme with Marino and Carnes. Yes. I will say that that's Salino and Barnes. Correct. Correct. Some could argue also Marino and Carnes, but that's not that's rhyming. That's not a rhyme. Statement number five. This pair are both big football fans. Ooh, that's another tough one where it's got to be both. I, 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 I'll specify. You, yes. you got to you gotta assume Dan Marino, big football fan. <laughs> I'll specify... Um, both big football fans, according to what Evan was able to find via Googling. <laughs> right. They're probably all football fans. Football's a good time. <laughs> sure. To I, me. <laughs> I, man, the pressure's on now because I want to get them all right. But I'm going to say Marino and Carnes. That is correct. Yeah. But be careful. Fuck. It is Karn, not Karns. You you slip up once more. <laughs> you're going to be booted out there with the weed whacker. <laughs> okay, are you ready? I'm ready. For the final. The final question. The, the funny thing, <laughs> I'll say this into the mic. The funny thing about, I'm taking a second to reread through this. I wrote all of these questions and didn't write any of the answers. <laughs> 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 I was just like... I'm going to remember I'll that. I'll remember I don't it. have space to write the answers. My notes are, are so long. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Statement number six. Great. These two are breaking up their company via a lawsuit <laughs> in which one party called the other a ham sandwich looking waste of space. What? Oh, man. I did not know that we came across uh, that, that, that that quote existed. 
I will say... And I feel like you could be trying to trick me. Hmm. But I'm going to say... Salino and Barnes. Wrong. That was Marino and Carn. Oh, They owned a furniture no. store together. And in 2016, Richard Carn called Dan Marino a ham sandwich looking waste of space. That does sound like Richard Carn. <laughs> You that might have thought it would have been the other way around, but no. <laughs> former uh, former Miami Dolphins quarterback. Um, Evan. <laughs> Has this been a good use of this episode? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> what have we learned? Mm. What have we learned? I think <clears throat> we've learned uh, not to trust lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> that aren't working for you uh, firsthand, especially when they're defending themselves. They're very good at it. And yeah. uh, don't believe anything you read in an article that a lawyer's saying about themselves. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's true. Um, I'm going to say that uh, Salino and Barnes, uh, it's 80% confidence. <laughs> 20% jingles. 20% jingles. 10%. Perspiration. Yeah. Uh, we've learned that um, commercial jingles are simple because they're mm-hmm. made for simple people. Simple people. <laughs> uh, I, I guess it's time for us to wind things down. Oh, finally. I, think, I got know, so wound up. I know. And <laughs> I hit my mic. <laughs> uh, the court is going to be adjourned soon. Oh, judge, <laughs> jury. Judge, jury, execution. executioner. Oh, yeah. So I guess uh, as judge, jury, and executioner. Yes. Who do you think is guilty in the split between Salino and Barnes? This nasty breakup, this tragic love story. Even saying what I just said, where I don't think I can trust either of them. After the journey I went through reading about the two of them, and man, it was a journey. (laughs) I am siding with Ross Salino. I think that I also am siding with Ross Salino. Did, did I convert you I, over? Uh, well, <laughs> or were you already a little bit there? Right before we started recording, I was Team Barnes all the way. Yeah. But then the more we talked about it, and the more that it was Barnes who was putting all the negative information mm. out, uh, I mean that seems that seems suspicious. You know, there's also I didn't I didn't take a lot of this down, but there's like a lot of accounts of Stephen Barnes being a very angry, short fuse sort of guy. Yeah. So I don't know that he's poaching people. He was, the hypocrisy of the nepotism. I don't know. I don't trust him. Yeah. I don't trust it. But I do trust his new jingle. Absolutely. Which was. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've wanted to memorize this one. It's so much eight harder. Million. Well, eight hundred million. <laughs> you know what else I trust? Is our Instagram account. Hey. You can go follow it. You can. At how do we human? Because again, we got that handle. We got that handle. <laughs> you know, we're gonna be, we're gonna be posting stuff on there. That takes some little pictures of our faces. We're gonna take some little pictures of our little faces. And we've got little faces. We've got tiny little faces. Uh, pinch your fingers together and spread them out to to make the picture bigger on your phone, so you can see our tiny little faces. Uh, ti- to be clear, gigantic heads. Mm, yes. But tiny little faces and not even perfectly on the center no it's very off center yeah you know those fish that have um their face solely on Mm -hmm. one side of their body yeah that's me oh that's you yeah oh that's the uh, i thought that was the front of your face that's the side of your head that's the side that's pretty cool man thank you glad you can be you not a lot of people are particularly accepting of it this is the first time we've mentioned that we look this way (laughs) Uh, I think so, but I think that we've, you know, we've built up this, uh, this trust I the audience that I, it feels like a safe uh, space. I am a deep ocean creature. <laughs> <laughs> I have a little light bobbing off the top of my head. Yeah, the, that's... It's dark down there and I get scared. <laughs> you get scared. <laughs> There's so much unknown down there. Uh, so I also want to throw out there like hey we've got a a spreadsheet right now with like i don't know 30 some ideas on it that we've burned through five of maybe 
mm-hmm. we're gonna run out of ideas at some point hey yeah. if you've got an idea if you a are you listening to us yes <laughs> is anybody out there and if you are do you have can an idea anybody that's... hear me <laughs> to be no more <laughs> pink floyd <laughs> Anyways, yes. uh, if yeah, if you have a if you have a, a idea for something you'd like to hear us blather about, uh, you can. A, I mean, you can comment on an Instagram post. You can direct message us on Instagram. Yes. That'd be crazy. Slide into those DMs, baby. You can also email us at how do we human pod at gmail dot com. Do because we didn't get that. We handle. didn't get it. Um, you so know, there's a pod at the end. Listen, everyone has regrets in their life. Yeah. And this one certainly is one of ours. Regrets? <laughs> I've had a few. <laughs> <laughs> oh, long story short, we are your monkeys. Make us dance. <laughs> Reach out to us. We want to talk. We're tired of talking to each other. Evan, do you have anything you want to plug? Yeah, so I'm starting a, another business. Uh, this one I feel a little more secure in. Oh. Gotta try um, not to poke a hole in it. Please don't. Yeah, I my ego can't take it anymore. I'm, <laughs> it's worn pretty thin. I feel worthless and like I don't have a lot of good ideas. Uh, this just gonna make you an easier target for me. Uh, okay, don't, don't. Ah, okay. Just let me get it. I'm just gonna get it out there. I have to say it uh, and just put it out into the world, and the world will embrace it. I'm starting a business. Uh, I've got an app already. Um, you go on the app. If you're uh, in the market for a mattress, say, okay. um, tell me what you like in a mattress and I will go to sleep train and try the mattresses out and find the mattress that you will like. Okay. The company is called mattress man underscore. Oh, because that is all I could get. And that is, <laughs> that's, uh, that's the company, like not the not the like handle name. That's... I couldn't get that handle. It's the handle is mattress man. The word underscore with an underscore after it. Oh. Um, dot com. Um, you know, you you get what you can take. Um, sure. And that's what I took, and I I'm I'm very excited about it. I'm excited to hear uh, what people want in a mattress, and I'm excited to to spend hours at Sleep Train. Yeah, well, that's that's great. I'm I'm very happy for you. This new business, uh, a very, very supportive friend oh over here. No holes poked. No holes poked. Wow. I, I mean, I just just let me know how it goes. Okay, I will. I'll okay. I'll, I'll follow up next episode. Yeah. Good lord. Why? I have to ask. At the beginning, hmm? you seemed like if you want say a mattress was do you provide other services is mattress just like like what i you seemed hesitant about using mattress as an example i mean and again nothing but support over here i just have to ask i mean if i'm being honest originally i was going to just i could get things for anybody, whatever you wanted, okay, kind of yeah. like an Uber Eats sort of situation. Sure, but I definitely could not get that handle. Um, the of only Uber v- Eats? No, good lord, no! You would be surprised. <laughs> um, and that's what led me. You know, when you you look up uh, uh, on Namecheap or GoDaddy, and you look up a handle, and it gives you a list of things. Uh, Mattress Man was recommended, but again, not also not available. Um, so now that I have the handle mattress man, underscore, underscore, first one, a word, second one, an underscore, right. I feel like I kind of need to at least start as a just niche mattress man. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. And well, I that will be that man that for makes sense. you or whoever else needs a mattress. Okay. That asked and answered. I feel good. I yeah. feel good about this. What do you got going on? Um, if you've ever wanted to be stronger or mm-hmm. faster mm. or wanted to fly, fly bigger, stronger, faster. Exactly. I have purchased mm. several vats of radioactive nuclear mm. waste. Oh. And you're more than welcome to come on down to my warehouse in West Covina 
and just bathe yourselves in them and try to gain superpowers. Wow. Yeah. So, so try to, has this ever happened? I don't know. I don't, I don't see myself as like the hero type, so I've mm. never tried it out, but That's I know that fair. some people do want to do something like that so i just it i've offered it it would be a tough life if you became a superhero but just were like i'm not the type i don't i don't want to do this right and you just live your normal life but you've got these superpowers that's a waste what do you think would speaking of waste (laughs) (laughs) nuclear waste yes and also speaking of waste this episode and our time <laughs> and your and the listeners time and the listeners don't forget time. them we didn't forget you <laughs> if you made it all the way to this point in the episode i love you <laughs> <laughs> that's fair to say if you made it to this point in the episode i love you too okay bye okay bye <laughs>